In this video, we will see how to approach a case of parotid gland. When a patient comes to you with swelling in the face, you have to confirm whether it is a parotid gland. The first thing that you have to do is, you have to see that whether the swelling is present in the parotid region. Now we will see the boundaries of parotid region. The boundaries of the parotid region are zygomatic arch, external ear and anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle, ramus of the mandible, angle and inferior border of the mandible and anterior border of the masseter muscle. When a swelling is present in this region, it is most probably a parotid gland swelling. Here you can see the parotid duct running along the anterior border of the masseter muscle which opens opposite to the upper molar tooth. Here you see the classical finding in a parotid gland tumor that is lifting of the ear lobule. This is another finding when there is a parotid gland tumor which is obliteration of the retromandibular groove. Now here when the parotid gland is pushed vertically upwards, it stops near the zygomatic arch. This is known as curtain sign. This is due to the attachment of the deep cervical fascia to the zygomatic arch. Here you see the deep cervical fascia splits to enclose the parotid gland and getting attached to the zygomatic arch and the tympanic plate. That is, at the lower pole of the parotid gland, the deep cervical fascia splits into superficial layer which forms the parotidomasetric fascia and deep layer, the stylomandibular ligament. Here you see the opening of the parotid duct opposite to the crown of upper molar tooth. You end the examination by looking at the integrity of facial nerve. So, presence of swelling in the parotid region, lifting of ear lobule, obliteration of retromandibular groove and curtain sign are the characteristic feature of a parotid gland swelling.